Okay. So, the last guy, he was quite good. Uh, machine learning is super interesting and super fun, and I do it for a living, and I'm happy about that. It makes for great talks like that other one. Um, but in an 80-20, like, Pareto efficiency kind of way, that's just like, like, if you do the mechanics of data science, it's like get the data, clean the data, fit the model. 80% um, is like the, grudge, like the drudge work, and I'm glad you came to join me and hear about the other 80%. So hassle-free ETL with PySpark. Um, the 80% is not fun. Let's do it as easily as possible. Uh, first, me, uh, command line humor. Um, I'm Rob. I'm a data scientist at ZocDoc. If you don't know what ZocDoc is, think of it like an uh, open table for doctor's appointments. You book online. Super easy. You want to see a doctor now? Awesome. You got it. Uh, I'm also a Corgi enthusiast. On the right, you'll see Ellie. She is a Corgi. Uh, she is also my pride and joy. Enjoy. Um, side note about ZocDoc, a little like the way that the company uh, is cool with sending me here is that let you know that we are hiring for a machine learning engineer. I'd be super thrilled if one of you uh, contacted me about that because I also get a referral bonus. <laughs> All right, so what do we want? Um, again, core premise here, we're lazy, we want easy, and that means being very needy. We want a lot of things. Uh, so we have all this data, we want to be able to access it, kind of explore it, wander around a bit, find out what we want. Uh, then we want to package something up nice and tidy, uh, run it every day or whatever, um, to automate our ad hoc stuff. Uh, if we want whatever company we're working for to survive, uh, we better start planning for 100x and hope we get there, or else we just fade away. Uh, so we're going to need sc scalability. And again, hope lazy. We want to reuse code. That's what code's for. Compartmentalize stuff, plug it into other places. So the name didn't give it away. Uh, part of the hassle-free part is the PySpark part. Uh, and we can check off ease of access and scalability in a couple steps. Uh, one of Databricks, Jupyter, or Zeppelin, take your pick. I don't care. No, no bias here. Uh, hook it up to a Spark cluster. You're done. Check, check. That was very simple. Um, I use Databricks, a note on the bottom, not a rep, I don't sell it, it's just good. So if you don't believe me, um, I trust that you do, but uh, we're Python people. We, you know, we liked iPod, IPython notebooks before they became Jupyter notebooks. We like ad hoc stuff. It's fun, it's a good time. Um, Databricks, Jupyter, Zeppelin, all notebooks, no brainer. We can fa fast forward past this part. Scalable, for those that aren't familiar with Spark, this is kind of a freebie too. Um, Spark is a distributed in-memory computational engine. Uh, the syntax associated with it is expressive, compact, and kind of fun. Um, it's written in Scala. Uh, I don't hold that against it. There's a nice Python wrapper. Very nice. Um, and if you have more data, this is the scalability part. We'll just add more machines. It's distributed. What do we care? Same code runs no matter what the size. All right. But for the main part, the other, the other components that we're looking for, uh, I'm going to learn by doing. You know, we're all, we all write code, so it's easier to see code. Background information, for those that don't remember this now seemingly outdated uh, terminology, ETL. Uh, extract, step one, get your data. Transform, make it into something you actually want. Load. Save it somewhere nice so you can access it later. A uh, little glimpse into what PySpark looks like. Uh, you can extract data two lines. If I had a little more width on the screen, it would have been one line. Uh, clean it, a few transformers, and then save. That's sort of context specific. No code there. Um, and for those developers that deal with particularly needy PMs or business uh, users, as, as a data scientist, a lot of business users and PMs in my life, uh, you do this once and you do it well, they're like, oh, it's like crack to them. They want more. So ETL jobs can accumulate quickly. Um, you know, you make a nice like data warehouse stable. You put a little uh, chart that, that's fed by it. Graphs are great. Insights are great. We want more. Um, before you know it, it, kind of you have stuff running all night. It's very inefficient. Uh, you'll notice that there. 
are generally more questions to be answered from data than data sources themselves. So if you think of the E, T, and the L, there are a few E's, many T's, hopefully not too many L's, or else you have data spread all over the place. Um, so if we're dealing with an in-memory computational engine, well, let's take advantage of that. Let's have jobs that are dependent upon each other and share that memory, work on the same cluster. So we have, we can construct a, a little dependency graph. So if you have one job that like loads a bunch of stuff, keeps it in the cluster, we have a, uh, it saves data, you know, makes it readily available, feeds it to all the little dependent jobs, and then once it's first level children are done, delete the data, repeat, recursive in that way. Uh, easy way to do this, um, tree TL, super compact little uh, Python package, does exactly that. Maintain the job order, cache the data that's gonna be used, so if you have a job that runs, it does some stuff. Um, tree TL will check, say does this have any children? If those children are gonna, maybe they want the data. If it does, well, cache the data, because Spark has a notion of you know, it's lazy evaluation, caching means, in this context, save what you've done so far, and like force the evaluation when needed. Um, and then pass it along. Uh, for those looking for kind of a web app GUI or job scheduler, or like run every day at noon, cron stuff, that's not what this is. This is just about passing the data around. Uh, will that be added? No, there's enough of that out there. All right. So the actual learn by doing. This uh, inherits uh, the, in, the inheritance from job that's in tree TL. Uh, there wasn't enough room on screen to put the import statement. You can trust me on that. Uh, so if we have, if we picture one loader as a job and then two children that want that data after it's done, um, in kind of the classical run a pipeline in its own concept, you might have one pipeline that says like load data, transform data, save it, and you have a bunch of these going at once. Uh, but really it's the same E at the core. So load the data, save it, make it fast. That's only a couple lines. Notice PySpark, a lovely syntax. Again, if you want to load a huge JSON source, well then just read JSON. Really can't be any easier. If we want to write a dependent job, label it as such. This uh, is dependent upon get some data, the original extractor method, or extractor job. Uh, it's in its transform method, it's gonna, you've defined the parameter that it's gonna receive, uh, and that's gonna be the data from the prior one. You're gonna do some stuff with it, who knows, um, and you load it. Snuck in a little more PySpark there uh, for another taste of how easy it is. If you have, trans if you have data, partition by, because you want to partition data, you want to be efficient about it, save it as a type, in this case, parquet. Couldn't be any easier. If we have another job, so I said there's this like, little diamond structure here. So if you have the second child, that's also gonna receive the same data. So get some data has two children, so tree TL will say like, it has more than one child, save the data, keep it in memory in the Spark cluster, pass it along. And then once those jobs are complete, the original E will unpersist. And then lastly, we have this final job that takes the output, the transform data from the two, two uh, second step children, merge them together. So each one of these detects that it has a child, cache the data, pass it along, last job does its thing, the middle step jobs unpersist, and I have this last one. Each one can extract its own data, receive data from a parent, it can load its own data, and pass its transform stuff along. Uh, so we have this communication between jobs just to keep data in memory. It seems like a lot of tedious bookkeeping, but if you're dealing with, like if you launch a cluster, you need to get the data from somewhere. And if it's a lot of data, which we're planning for 100x, uh, you know, you want to, you don't want to overload your network costs or anything like that. Like, it's just inefficient. If you're constantly dealing with I.O., well, then you're missing the whole point of using Spark. The whole point is to keep it in memory. Load it once, share it around, and get rid of all of it. Uh, 
when you finally want to run it, there's a job runner in TreeTL, give it some jobs, let it figure out. You've tagged the dependencies with uh, the decorators. It will kind of organize everything. Um, in between jobs, it will cache the data as needed. because The package doesn't do much, but it does that. Um, and I'm willing to check off reproducibility and reusability there. Uh, but there was a lot of a lot of setup there, and I had a lot of comments saying there's more stuff to be done. Um, so it doesn't feel like you save all that much code, but if you're if you're only loading from a few different places, and to be honest, there are data idioms like you get you know data every hour or every day or something like that. Well, all these components, all these E, T, and L components are composable. You can have a uh, generic job that says like get data from some source that you're going to dependency inject, um, and it's going to follow this you know, year, month, day, hour pattern in the file structure. So then you can mix that into whatever job you want. Ditto with loading. Um, I know a lot of my data, it's, we care about like searches per day and appointments per day and things like that. So when I load messy data and I transform it, I'm mean, I extract messy data and transform it, and then I save it somewhere uh, for ready access and analytics. It's usually partitioned by like a year, month, day construct. So it's consistent. We can mix that in too. So all you really ever have to write is the transform method. All right, a few guidelines. This first slide is completely unobjectionable. Um, jobs should always be rerunnable, tested, and rerunnable. Get it? Um, so there are always there are always issues, there are always bugs. Um, everyone likes to say that they write and test their code thoroughly, but let's be honest, we've all put horrible bugs out there before. It's inevitable. Uh, and sometimes things just crash. Who knows? Uh, but you need to be able to rerun your jobs. And you need, you know, if you had an error, uh, you have an error from, you know, five months ago during like one specific week, it was not an arbitrary time frame, that did happen to me. Um, just a couple weeks ago while I was putting this slide together, actually. Uh, so it's there for that one week. I need to rerun the full, the full tree for that time frame. No problem. Um, the rest are more PySpark specific considerations because uh, the other stuff is just generic. If you've written any ETL before, you know, rerunnable, cool. Um, so. Spark has its, uh, its preferred embedded optimized file, ty file type is called Parquet. Um, it's super easy and it's super fast. If you want to save something as Parquet, you just write dot write dot Parquet. If our goal is always easy, let's do something like that. Um, also, if you're using PySpark for ETL, you're probably doing analysis in it. It has a nice machine learning library. It's great. Um, so Spark reads Parquet very quickly. It's a nice, like, descriptive column store format. Um, and then burying the lead a little bit. Always use data frames when you can. And Spark has uh, two primary data abstractions. It's the RGD and the data frame. The RGD came first, and it had no schema information associated with it, but it was, like, flexible. It made sense. And then they put a higher level abstraction that had a little schema information with a huge performance boost. You always want the performance boost. Give a little schema. It's not too much to ask. Um, partition your data. Again, common sense. Something that databases have been doing since there's been databases. Uh, just because we're moving to like data lakes and event frameworks and things like that, uh, just because we're schemaless, whatever, doesn't mean we can't partition our data. Um, I mentioned that a lot of my stuff is partitioned by day. So, data frame, write. Partition by write as parquet. I forgot the write in there, so that's actually a bug. Um, but again, easy. Uh, the whole point of the tree TL organization, the whole point of sharing all this memory, caching intermediate results in Spark is very important. Because with the lazy evaluation, you construct this huge chain of commands that it might do, then you call an action on it, it'll go through that big chain. But then if you call another action on it later, it's gonna go through the big chain again. That doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, if we have a breakpoint where we're going to use a data frame multiple times, cache it, save it. Memory, is, uh, memory efficiency is why we're doing this. Uh, between jobs, TreeTL does this. Within jobs, go nuts. It's up to you. The flip side, uncache isn't a word, but do that. Um, again, it's easy. Memory is what feeds Spark. It's what makes it work. So if you're not using something anymore, delete it. Make room for lots more data. Again, TreeTL will do this between jobs. Within a job, go nuts. Be efficient. And that's it. And if you work at ZocDoc, you'll find out why we end our slides with cows. <laughs> 10 minutes for questions. Separate, this is for batch jobs. So uh, if you're training, uh, a lot of my inputs are either for kind of like offline uh, data mining or offline model building, stuff like that. So the cost of waiting till tomorrow and having a run overnight, zero for me. Uh, streaming is kind of its own animal. Uh, in that case, like, you don't have to worry so much about those dependencies because you already deployed something in the same cluster it's through the same pipeline right so this is more like if you um, so like the you know the full production scale organizes everything uh, job scheduler Luigi it's like a bunch of in a bunch of different work streams they don't need to talk to each other or anything like that this is like within one of those batch jobs you could be more uh, like Luigi has nice support for running a spark job as one of its steps well, within that Spark job, be smart. Yeah? I believe Jupyter does have integration with, uh, you can hook it up to a cluster now. Something like uh, Databricks has the full manager of the cluster built into it. Um, I don't know about like cores within a given machine, um, but I don't know if that's like the primary, like if you're using Spark, I don't know if that's the primary goal for optimization, right? The point is like you have something in memory and you want to spread it out horizontally. I mean, you're not trying to like squeeze every bit out of the, the individual machine. Yeah? How does TreeTL compare to Stellar schedule? Um, <laughs> TreeTL is as small and simple as possible. I, ha I have it for a very limited number of use cases. Uh, it is no, not a platform framework or anything. Uh, well, it's all offline stuff, so it's, there's no risk to it, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how, did, um, how, are you, uh, how did TreeTL manage memory versus PySpark manage memory? Like, uh, what, how do those work together? Oh, so it's not that it's like, it's not managing memory bytes itself. It's making sure that in between jobs, like if you run, if you have a job run in isolation, like it has no need to save data for later. The job is done. So it's just like, it's leveraging PySpark's caching system. It's just make, it's just doing that when it's needed for other jobs. So like PySpark, if you were to, if you were to replicate that functionality just in PySpark natively, you would have essentially one big job. So this is so you can write individual little component jobs, plug them onto the end of, end of the list, and then TreeTL will say like, oh, it has a new dependency here, keep data around for this guy also. So it's about decomposing. Yeah. So, um, I do sound like a Databricks rep at this point, but they have a free community edition. I would, I would uh, suggest using that because you don't have to pay for the resources of the machines you hook up, you got the notebook. There's no like DevOps consideration. That's free. Yeah, because it doesn't, like, it has a cache method that's essentially called. How you uh, inherit and override that functionality is irrelevant. It's more about that. It's 
it's recognizing the fact that this is a time in which we need to keep, keep data uh, on hand and pass it along to someone else. So you can, like the, like, the way that I use it is my override method is always the same. I, I just say, like, transform data, basically, dot cache, or anything associated with it. Uh, so yeah, you could. Um, I haven't, though. Pardon? Yeah, because it's only passing data to the uh, to the like the job wrapper essentially. It's like there is a job class, right? And it has these components E, T, and L. And whatever data is being passed along to the next job is just it's just an input variable to the transform method. If under the hood you're then saying do some other stuff and drop it in Cassandra. That doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's really like you're implementing that uh, transaction. Five minutes. Yeah. Um, not yet, but I will. Uh, GitHub sounds like a good place for it. Also, I believe that. Um, Hi Gotham puts all the videos and notes up. Am I, am I right about this? Yeah. So in, in your work, do you use Spark-specific um, functionality? Uh, but do you do you do you really need to use Spark in Tree TL? No. Um, I'm saying for the purposes of our various goals, I find that to be the easiest. Like no-brainer way to achieve scalability and like batch jobs and stuff like that. There are a million ways you can do it, just my personal preference. Um, I happen to like Spark a lot. Any, basically any system where you could say, oh, I have more data, don't change a thing, just add another machine, like, thumbs up. Well, it could like, it could be inside a Luigi job. Yeah, if you have so, picture a bunch of Luigi jobs in a sequence, right? One of them, uh, well, like a number of them are Spark jobs. If you find that any of them load or share data, well, then maybe just put them together. Let them. Uh, you can still write them as separate, uh, nicely segregated little little objects. Tree TL just kind of put them all together and say like this is one job. Keep it in memory. Point is like you just anything that anything that avoids duplicate uh, extracting and loading and whatnot. Whatnot. I don't care if you use Tree TL. Just in general, don't do it. I guess that's about it. Thank you.